I got a list of the top 10 most creative mimic ideas that you can throw at your players, or if you're a player, send this video to your dungeon master and then be skeptical of every single thing you ever run across in the world from now on. That's right, we're covering everything from a pencil mimic to a house mimic and everything in between, all the different creative outside the box ideas, because that's what we're about here on this channel. And I'm throwing it a little different direction. Normally I do homebrew rules and stuff like that. I want to do some homebrew lore, or in this case, a monster. So for this top 10 list, we're starting off at number 10. And this actually is the, it's the type of mimic where you actually help do its job for it of eating you is a bedroll, <laughs> a sleeping bag mimic. Uh, you literally climb into it to go to sleep with, and then it gets you. And staying here in number 10 in this concept of you climbing into the something and then it's a mimic is a clothing mimic, a t-shirt mimic, a suit of armor mimic. Maybe you just got a cool magic item that magically cleans itself off and doesn't get dirty and you can change the appearance of it. How cool. Maybe that's like a changeling type mimic that can change its sh Ooh, not good. You're literally gonna be wearing the mimic as if you choose the clothes mimic or sleeping inside of the mimic if it's the bedroll. Either way, not good. Moving on. Now, Everyone knows of a door mimic. We've just probably one of the most popular next to a chest and a door is uh, the door mimic is iconic. Yes. But what if there's a key mimic? This might seem simple, but there's a lot of ways you can go with this. Maybe the key you have to work with the mimic and the mimic when you stick it in the lock actually changes shape to match the lock and becomes a master lock of some kind. Or if the mimic doesn't like you, it doesn't shape shift itself. And then it's the key doesn't work on anything. Maybe all the mimic wants is just a little bite, just a little bite. Ah, take one point of damage every time you use this key or maybe it wants more. Maybe it's the lock picking tools that the thief has that he bought from that sketchy shop that once was. And it's actually a mimic lock pick waiting for the right moment to strike. And maybe it's waiting for the worst time to come out to reveal that it is a lock picking mimic where they're trying to break into the wait, it's a mimic lock pick. Number eight, we're getting a little bit more humanoid now with all of this. And we're going to go for a statue, which is as simple as just a statue of some sort of creature. That's very simple. But you can have this statue be of any kind of creature, a lion statue mimic, a dragon statue mimic. But when I was talking to my team and community about all the different ideas for the, all these mimics, which you can join in the Discord uh, link below and all this type of stuff to really kind of brainstorm all this stuff. Another thing is, what if it was a body, like a body mimic, like an unconscious corpse body mimic, where there's a whole bunch of like five, six corpses in this one spot. One of these corpses is the mimic that caused all of this death and destruction. And they're looking around, looking around, and there's a corpse mimic. Number seven and up now, all get me really excited, is uh, we're getting a little bigger now with these mimics, and we're also traveling of a wagon mimic, <laughs> stagecoach mimic, uh, a, a some sort of transportation, mode of transportation mimic. This you're also getting inside of, technically. You get inside of the stagecoach, yeah, with the horses, and you're inside of a mimic, and there's a whole, that's a whole encounter or you're, it's some, some people are inside the mimic, some people are on top of the mimic when it reveals itself. And you can slow play this too, when they take their stagecoach to a certain spot and they park it in one spot and they go and they do their adventure, they come back and it's just in a different location than where it was. Maybe not by much, but it's definitely, it, mo it moves. You can also escalate this and then next time one, one of the horses is missing. What's going on here? No one's gonna expect that the mimic is a, it's a stagecoach mimic. They're gonna think of many other things before they think of stagecoach mimic. And if we keep scaling this idea up here, what about a boat mimic? A boat mimic sounds terrifying. You're out in the middle of the water and you're inside of a boat mimic? Oh my God. I just had another idea of a pirate ship mimic. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean with all the tentacle faces, whatever, a tentacle boat pirate mimic. The boat is the captain of the ship. Okay, next. Time out from all the mimic fun. I wanted to tell you guys about a giveaway that I have that only has a few more days going on right now. And we're about to unlock another giveaway for the 50,000 subscriber mark. I'm doing a big 50,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm giving away an iPad. I'm giving away all, a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, so check out the giveaway that's currently down there right now. If it's as long as it's still going on, it only has a few days left on it. But even if you don't, there could still be another giveaway that I'll go back and link here. Of the 50,000 subscriber giveaway, I'm super blown away and appreciate all the support that I've got from all you guys, whether it be views on the channel, patrons, Kickstarter supporters, all that kind of stuff. We are doing so much now. I'm making my own tabletop roleplay game system that's gonna be launching the alpha here pretty soon. I have a lot of videos here on the channel about that. All that support goes towards helping that as well. In the giveaway, you can also sign up to the mailing list and on the mailing list is gonna be a lot of stuff about DC20 RPG, which is the game I'm making, along with a bunch of other free stuff that you get just for being a part of the mailing list that I only am gonna send out at most once a month. Free stuff, discount codes, alerts, 
on whenever I am going to be launching my next Kickstarter and other big projects like that. A lot of really cool stuff that I'm just now starting up after this whole 50,000 mark. I'm launching it. So check out the link down in the description, unless it's a description mimic. And you got to be careful because if you click that button, <laughs> number six now, we still have structures, but we're not as mobile with these structures. They're in a little bit more structured buildings. A house mimic. Now, a house mimic sound, might sound pretty basic and simple, but first of all, keep in mind, this is huge. It's a very large... <laughs> very large creature, a house mimic. You're fighting a house, that's crazy, right? So if you wanna shrink it down, you can do something simple like an outhouse mimic. And it's just a little outhouse and you go inside to do your business and oh, it's a mimic. Uh, look at what, what would that kind of fight be like? And then if we scale it up, you could do something like an inn, like an actual, the inn of the town is a mimic. What a great location for a mimic to be of all these people coming inside and sleeping. And if you wanna scale it up to really big, you could do a mansion mimic. And oh man, that would be a, a huge, Huge Titanic fight. Number five, we're gonna calm it back down in size, but keep going cool with the structures thing. I really love this. I don't know, I don't know why I love this one so much. It's a rank it so high at five, but a bridge mimic. I think it's really cool to have one area and another area, and this mimic is bridging the gap between these two areas. Why is it wanting to bridge the gap? Why is it acting as a bridge? Is sometimes it's a bridge and it's waiting, almost like a troll underneath the bridge, waiting for the right opportunity. And yeah, these are the people I'm going to consume. Maybe you introduce the bridge mimic in some sort of spot where they have to get from point A to point B and in their travels are like, wait a second, we could just go across this bridge and we'd be right there. We don't have to travel around all these things. Yeah, who, oh, this bridge is not on the map here. That's crazy. Boom, bridge mimic. Now we're really getting way outside the box here on these mimics in these top four right now. And uh, this mimic uh, came a, a long time ago when I was in, I was back when I was a teacher in high school, we were talking about stuff and one of my students drew this, right? So this is a shout out to you, Reese, is <laughs> drawing a pond mimic. It's a simple little pool of water, right? It's just a pond with like these little fronds and leaves and algae vines or whatever kind of sticking up out of it. Oh, wait, those are tentacles. The ecosystem of fish living inside of it, it's by the mimic's choice. It's a pond mimic. If you want to scale it up, you could have a lake mimic and there's, oh, these creatures keep getting disappeared. There must be a monster inside the lake, like a Loch Ness monster type of thing in the lake. And maybe the mimic creates part of its tentacles and creates look at some sort of creature like a shark that's like swimming around when it really it's one of its own tentacles bringing people in to investigate about this creature. Your players go to investigate, they swim down, down, down. There, there is no monster here, but along the floor, of the of the sea is it opens up eyeballs <laughs> open up and there's four full of eyeballs as the reeds and tentacles start to grab them crazy now for number three instead of having a recessed body of water that is a a lake mimic we're going to now change this here and keep with the whole water theme but go outside now it's an island mimic it doesn't have to be a crazy large landmass but it's some landmass surrounded by water and this is just the protrusion of a mimic similar type concepts and applications towards this lake mimic type of situation and there's this island where creatures keep disappearing out of people creep disappearing on this island but there's a treasure on this island but maybe that rumor is a complete Lions just designed to lead people to this island to their death to feed this mimic. These top two here, I think are a notch above all the rest here. These top two are crazy and I really have loved these so, so much. Number two is a prosthetic mimic. Prosthetic body parts of an arm, a leg, however much you wanna artificer it to where it moves also or articulates in some way or however simple you wanna make it. It's just a simple wooden leg, you know, old school prosthetic type of situation. Somebody has a wooden leg that they use. No, no, no. It's a mimic. You can go with the dark and monstrous mimics here and it's waiting just to strike the person it's attached to or what if we put a spin on this type of mimic in general? What if we took a spin on the species of mimics in, in, in general? What if somebody, whether by magically or naturally, or maybe this is just a different brand of less evil mimics, what if it's symbiotic? What if someone had a prosthetic eye mimic and without magic or without any sort of technology and science, you have this creature, this symbiotic mimic in someone's eye that's working with them and even connects through a possibly painful process, but then the creature could emit some sort of secretions that numb the pain in some way. And it actually connects to them and you can see through that eye, possibly granting vision to someone that could not see before. What if they attach to someone's arm and they actually mimic them and the mimic their skin, mimic their feel, connect to their nervous system, and they actually have a hand again. But their hand 
is a mimic or whatever this good symbiotic version of a mimic is and you can't even tell. Now, if they rolled up their sleeve and you looked at a certain spot, there might be some sort of attachment situation there, however much you wanted to play that up or down. But man, that's really cool. How did this person create these mimics? Where did this type of mimic come from? Or are they still evil mimics waiting to strike when the moment's right? In general, this thought here on number two really took me into such a cool spot in my head thinking about good mimics, symbiotes really, like like almost like Spider-Man Venom type stuff. How much good could these creatures do medically in your fantasy world and what could they provide? It's super cool, love it, love it. Here we are now, number one. Oh, this is rough. This is rough. I went down the rabbit hole with all this stuff here. Whenever I do this process of absolute brainstorm here that I do for these, for homebrew rules that I've done on the channel, for the game system I'm making, all this kind of stuff, I just purely just go down all the rabbit holes of what if. And in the process of thinking about magic items, armor, what if you're a t-shirt, all these different things, one of the things I stumbled across is a magic item technically. And I was like, oh my God, if this was a mimic, this would be devious. This would be devilish. Oh my God, that's the perfect mimic. Mimic. If, if any mimic wanted to, this would be. So I want you to leave a comment down below what you think this mimic is. If it hasn't been any of the ones I've said or anything like that, I want to see what kind of mimics uh, you have here. There was an honorable mention of a chair mimic, table, furniture. Obviously, you have door and chest. A coffin mimic was similar to a chest mimic. You know, you get into a coffin uh, and maybe it eats the dead body inside and that's like its food, but that's weird. Uh, chandelier mimic, cask of ale mimic were some honorable mentions. But the number one mimic here that I thought was really devious is a healing potion mimic. In what circumstances does one drink a healing potion? <laughs> when they're low on health, when they're maybe in a very vulnerable situation, and this healing potion, you drink and it is a mimic. So at the time when you're the most vulnerable, it's just it doesn't even heal you. The, the liquid inside is just secreted from the mimic, which sounds kind of gross now that I said that. Uh, but you drink it and you now have a mimic attached to your face at a probably very bad time. Or maybe this idea just came to me. What if the, the liquid that it secretes, this red liquid that it secretes, is actually a healing potion, at least a little bit. Maybe it's like a very weak healing potion. It only heals for like 1d4, 1d6, something super simple, but it keeps refilling itself. <laughs> wow, how crazy is that? And you, as the mimic, because you're the dungeon master, you can control when that refill happens and maybe they don't realize it does or maybe as soon as they drink it, they put it down and it refills itself. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. They drink it again and then it waits. And all this is, is the mimic playing mind games with the person. And all this mimic's doing now is it's waiting for them to drink that healing potion at a very vulnerable time. Somebody's down and they just get knocked unconscious and you go to feed them a healing potion to their unconscious body and it strikes. Now that is ruthless as far as it goes, Dungeon Masters. Careful with that one. But what if somebody's at like 10 health, middle of combat, five health, something, they go to drink this healing potion and then that's when the mimic chooses. Now's my time to strike. What if the mimic could choose what type of liquid is in that vial? What if they could excrete some sort of thing instead of healing them, it knocks them out, knocks them unconscious. Constitution saving throw to pass out. I don't know, all this stuff was really cool for my head to get in and think about and run through about what a creature could embodying a potion of liquid that also could control what type of liquid it is making crazy. So if you like this concept, if you like thinking about this type of stuff, send it out to your friends. Let's have a mimic conversation down in the comments around amongst each other. And then what monster would you want to see next? Let, please, let me know. Depending on how well this series does, I can do all the stuff. I could do dragons. I could do red dragons and something so simple as that. I could do mind flayers. I could do rakshasas, any sort of creature. What if, you know, what if? I've homebrewed all sorts of rules and now I'm making a full-blown game system, but monsters, lore, all this type of stuff, there could be a lot of stuff here. Let me know what you want to see down there, and until next time, stay creative, think outside the box. Peace.